Hey, this is Sabrina Monarch of Monarch Astrology and Magic of the Spheres podcast. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you about the new moon solar eclipse in Libra on October 14th. So even though that's around a week away at the time of recording this, we're very much in the eclipse season in the field of this eclipse. And a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm sure you are already feeling and sensing. Just before we get started, though, I want to let you know that we're in enrollment season. My Evolutionary Astrology Intensive, this popular course that is in its fifth year of running, um, is open again for enrollment. We begin October 30th, and the application is in the um, a link in the notes. The Intensive has just undergone a major upgrade. Um, the last couple of years, I've been teaching advanced alumni programs. You may have heard me talking about Meteorite, which is um, these advanced workshops and had my students do creative projects and whatnot. And inside of teaching my you know, graduated students from the intensive and just exploring infinitely, I wanted to send that upgrade back to the intensive. So the Evolutionary Astrology Intensive it is itself a four month program where I give you the building blocks of evolutionary astrology. <clears throat> so this is soul based astrology, karmic astrology. Um, it has a lot to do with, you know, understanding how to really incarnate here in this lifetime. One, why you're here, which is a little bit existential. You know, I think in moments of crisis, we wonder why we exist or why we're here. But then there's these deeper levels of incarnation and jumping into our life that is letting our soul actually really land in our body in this lifetime and to land in the way that our body moves through space, right? The kinds of things that we do, the way that we participate with life and to be in this philosophical and experiential discovery of how we can really live it up as a soul in this unique incarnation. So this is a wisdom school that I've been growing up and developing alongside um, since I was 21 and it's been beautiful and amazing and I absolutely love sharing it. So I give you the building blocks, understanding the archetypes at depth of the signs, the planets, we learn the houses, aspects, how to put everything all together um, so that you can have a really deep understanding of your own natal chart that can continue to expand through time um, and that you also know how to read natal charts um, of other people. So the upgrade is now that the intensive is part of a year-long program called Diviner, which includes new classes monthly, um, several times a month for my alumni of the intensive. So we go deeper and expand into what we learned. We also learn new things, fold in some asteroids and Greek myths um, and new workshops that are channeled monthly. Um, and this is inspired by what a great time that I had with my students and my advanced communities, um, my advanced student community, um, deepening what we learned in the intensive and exploring new territory. So now that's included after that four month, a lot of my students have had such a great experience and they're like, what next? And it's kind of like sending you off into the world with all of this amazing knowledge that really lights up your life in a lot of new ways. Like it's very animist, you know, you feel the universe speaking to you in new ways. Um, but now you'll have a place to practice and study with your cohort and new cohorts and with me, um, for a longer time in diviner diviner, of course, the name being inspired by, you know, you're really becoming an intuitive. You're becoming a diviner when you practice astrology, whether or not you originally identified as intuitive or clairvoyant, you know, a lot of people do who come to astrology, but astrology definitely opens up channels of sight it can't help but to do that even if you're very linear and rational about how you use astrology it's gonna open up the path of being a diviner so that's why i called it that i have a few one-to-one -one mentorship spots left also for um people that want to work with me one-on-one -on -one for a longer period of time um coaching context and to be part of diviner as part of your mentorship Alumni also feel free to apply for the new Diviner container. So now I will share with you the things about the new moon. I just want to show the chart for a moment here um, to ground us in some of the things I'll be talking about. Ignore the house placements. Um, this is just relative to Portland where I pull the chart. But I'm going to be talking about this 
new moon in 21 degrees of Libra. It's very close to the south node, just a few degrees away. We have asteroid Eris in Aries right on the north node. And then we have Pluto and Capricorn squaring the nodes. So a little bit about what I see in these archetypes, and then I'll um, collapse the image and just talk with you all. So one is that the North Node represents an energy that's incarnating into the collective, you know, at at a, like a hungry Rahu North Node pace. Like it's a very incoming energy. And in Aries, this has a lot to do with our impulse and our instinct. And it's also wanting to step out and be our own person, to be autonomous, to um, maybe feel like vital in ourselves and feel like we are you know, active, dynamic, courageous, bold, magical people, okay, with Aries. And there, you know, when we think about emergence, there is something that we're emerging from. Aries is very much connected to like birth and new beginnings. And more or less what we're emerging from, I'm going to talk about here in terms of Pluto and Capricorn, where you know, Capricorn is the last cardinal sign that precedes Aries and Capricorn could be seen as like the culture that we come from, the um, family dynamics that we come from, the deep history um, of our culture, right? The things uh, that have led up in time through millennia to this moment that we're in, um, our own kind of habitual patterns, even like our nervous system and kind of biological wiring as a testament of history of evolution. And when we're trying to emerge to become something new, the past might be something that we're actively kind of warring against. Like, I want nothing to do with that. I want to break free from that. Or it might actually be relatively um, unconscious, right? And Pluto represents depth, um, unconscious material, um, among other things. So we will we'll unpack that more. Um, but in evolutionary astrology, when a planet squares the nodes, which is what Pluto is doing here, it has one resolution node in particular, which is going to be in this case, actually Libra. So you can tell what the resolution node is um, just by starting with the planet that is square the nodes and going in a clockwise direction. And the first node you hit is the resolution node. It basically is the last node that it hit um, in transit. And so Pluto resolving through the south node in Libra, um, the south node in Libra will represent a more harmonic, diplomatic um, way of being, right? If the Aries north node is about emergence and autonomy and self-directed personal um, power, then Libra is how we, how we relate, how we connect the types of intellectual um, frameworks that we have about cultivating relationship, our sense of justice, our sense of how we create um, how we create fairness or how we create equality, not just in relationships, but whatever whatever we're applying balance to. Let me collapse the chart and I'll just talk with you. So as I see this North Node in Aries, conjunct Eris, goddess of discord, it makes me think of a more disruptive Aries quality in the field. Um, and one of the images that comes to mind, not just from my own imagination, but actually just from conversations and things that I've been witnessing and hearing in the field is like the individual from a family system who steps out of the normal family pattern. Right. So we can think of it as Aries, like hero challenger. Um, this could be, you know, someone that isn't doing the family business, right? They've been uh, kind of conditioned their entire life that this is what happens when you grow up, you're going to join the family business and they don't want to do that. Right. And so there's a lot of tension of family members being disappointed or judging them or being almost kind of like admiring and envious of like, wow, you're really your own person, right? So whatever this dynamic is, this may have to do with family in your case, and it may really not feel that obviously connected to family. So we're going to unpack it at multiple layers. But just some other examples could be, you know, whenever you 
whenever you step out of the matrix of a family pattern, so let's say there's something like codependent in the family and you choose to be more independent and the kind of ripple and drama that that creates in the family dynamic. Um, also, let's say that you, you're going on to um, learn how to be like financially successful and make a lot of money, but you come from um, poverty. Like those kind of code switches from what you're familiar with would be um, something to think about with this eclipse, with this transit. Um, or, you know, the, the alternative mystic emerging from a fundamentally religious household, right? So just these tensions of going against the grain of the past which is actually, you know, nature creates emergent forms all the time. And then there's this kind of tussle socially between those emergent new forms and the um, establishment, right? So if you're in this position of stepping out and doing something new, you may feel that you've attracted some admirers or people that are impressed or actually want to follow you to that place that you're you're pioneering, right? Um, or you may be getting side eyed. You may be getting judged. Um, there's a sense that you know, or a sense that you know you're you've betrayed us. You're not one of us anymore. Um, or it may not be so above water, so obvious. It could be something. Um, that's more like an undercurrent of resentment or envy um, or whatnot, right? And you have to think too that if there's this natural tension, like if you're really conventional in some way and you see someone enter the field in which you're conventional, just do something so new and innovative, you might be impressed and you might also be a little bit threatened of like, hey, like I put in my years of dues, like I, you know, there's a sense of, who are you? Like new kid um, energy. I feel like I always have cat hair <laughs> issues. Okay. Don't mind me. Um, so a potential power struggle between Aries and Capricorn. Again, when this transit, whenever you see Aries and Capricorn transits, like highlighted, there's something around the archetypal youth, right? The newcomer, and then the establishment or the structures of power or the elders, and there is actually like a deep, you know, the elders and the structures that be, however imperfect and flawed they are, have created the matrix from which the emergent thing is emerging. So there has been a gift, there has been sacrifice, there has been some level of offering. And then Aries is kind of taking on this, like, this is what I want to cut myself from. This is where I need to like cleave myself off. Um, and there's often like, a deep archetypal integration in terms of the, you know, the person who leaves home and is like, I never want to see any of this again, but discovers along the way of their journey that there is actually a lot of richness from where they come from, even if they're going to do things differently, that there's a kind of reconciliation or friendship with the past that's possible. And that's where I see Pluto and Capricorn integrating through Libra is there being some emphasis right now on reconciliation at a deep level with elements from the past, even though there's also a huge impulse to do new things and to emerge and to um, forge new paths with the North Node in Aries. So another way that I wanted to um, invite us to think about it, if not so literally from you know, family dynamics or ancestry, even like if there's parts of your ancestry that you um, really appreciate and you feel really grateful for, but other parts of your ancestry that you're like, why? Or like, I don't like the burden of this and kind of going through like, as an individual, what, what do I have to do with the threads and the history and the family and the ancestry that I come from? And really there being something um, big about that at the moment. But let's take it even to another layer where it's not about family per se, but just thinking about, you know, our biological wiring, the way our brain works. There's a lot of wiring that we have that's based on survival and that's based on different survival pressures or traumas that we personally have faced or that um, have been faced by our species even or um, somewhere in the ancestral line. And so 
that could be like where you, you know, get excited about something or you feel um, like you want to move in a direction, but there's a part of you that's like, no, that's dangerous. Um, that will lead to death or failure or embarrassment or what have you. And so there's this kind of rigid part of the psyche internally that doesn't want to try new things or doesn't want to go in a new direction because there's such a protective mechanism around survival. Um, this isn't always so obvious, but it's essentially when we, whenever we have like a really strong um, protector part, uh, a self-critic or a punishing voice, it's usually trying to do some kind of job of protecting us, but it's gotten a little bit rabid in its way of doing that. Um, and so in thinking about the North Node in Aries and this evolutionary direction really in vitality, in life force. Like part of the fun of the Aries archetype is feeling like very um, vital physically, feeling very vital, even just like at a heart or emotional level, like feeling like you're capable of trying and doing new things um, and that you can, right? That you, you can take meaningful risks in life. And Libra, the sign of the scales, deals in a lot of abstractions, right? Like we weigh options. And we have to remember sometimes that the options that we are weighing are often abstract, right? Sometimes we're dealing in cold, hard, concrete reality, but sometimes we're dealing with our perception of an event, right? The story that we're telling about it. And it's like, does one version of the story... Um, make us feel really dead inside and like like we want to just crawl into a cave does one version of the story give us a sense of like heart opening and like clarity right so i've been thinking about pluto and capricorn this like deep kind of the power of like a grandmother tree like a very deep root system a sense of uh integrity at a soul level of just playing with when we're dealing with the mystery, right? When we're dealing with possibility or places where maybe we have even forgotten that mystery and possibility exist because we've gotten too fixed in our perspectives. But where it is that we are dealing with interpretations intellectually about ourselves and about our circumstances, have we tried the practice of weighing and trying on thoughts and seeing which thoughts create life? Um, this is something that, you know, has been important. I was just reminded of it by a mentor, um, the necessity of like really working with thoughts. But back when I was first starting to get really deep into my own kind of spiritual awakening process, there were lots of times where, you know, because I see these lights, essentially, um, you may have heard me talk about them. They look like little blue stars. Sometimes people tell me they see them too. Um, and they pop into my field of vision when I'm writing or speaking um, or thinking with my eyes closed. Um, and so sometimes when I need clarity or support, I can just kind of go into a dark room, look at the wall and start talking and try on different ideas. And the lights don't just pop off for anything and everything. They show me where there's resonance. So sometimes when I've been trying to understand something I say an idea it doesn't get a light I say another idea and I feel like this kind of ripple this like chills or something and I see the light and that particular thought that the light was verifying was um was more lit right <laughs> it just had more life force energy in it or it it was offering a a better timeline so you can try that practice in terms of noticing how different thoughts feel in your body, right? Like a lot of people do get chills when they um, reach some kind of epiphany. And so just noticing and sensing into the harmonic quality Libra of the abstractions that we entertain and how some abstractions um, are very depleting and how some abstractions and concepts give life. So um, another angle to kind of come back to 
whether this is how you're approaching um, kind of a historical lineage from where you come from, your family system, your ancestry, your culture, um, or your own personal past in terms of maybe um, spots that you're having a hard time digesting or approving of, um, where we're still kind of looping and haven't like made peace. I think there's something about reconciliation that's a huge theme for this eclipse. Um, part of the Pluto and Capricorn, um, one way that we might avoid feeling or avoid transformation with Pluto and Capricorn is by holding into structures of blame where um, we really lock into the roles of like whose fault it is and who's to blame. And that is a way of avoiding grief, essentially. Um, but also when it is that we're kind of like looping in a story, um, looping in these character roles and haven't found a way to, to kind of get to the heart of it and let it go. And so I think what Libra might be helping with, with this new moon in Libra and the resolution node of the South node um, here in Libra is actually taking the time to to weigh things, right? To think, um, but to do so with like a more fierce sense of justice, um, like bring that kind of like Aries strong, like erectness to it. And so if you're looping over something negative in your life that you're having a really hard time digesting, is there a way that you can soberly look at the dynamic and find the gift hidden inside of it, that you can find the places where you can give yourself credit for how you moved through something? Is there a way that you can try on different beliefs about the situation, right? If you think that something went wrong and then you know, you'll never have a chance again, or like that was your boat and you missed it. And you're, you know, creating these abstract mental thoughts that are telling a story of like doom and gloom. Can you pause with that and find a more harmonic way of relating to, um, relating to it? And I think this is, you know, part of Capricorn, that archetype really brings, uh, these reality hits, right? Like events that have a really hard impact at times where it's just like something happened, it didn't go how we wanted, or there's something that's just not ideal, right? And then we have all these stories and we build all these abstract concepts about it that make it even worse, like this echo chamber of story. There's maybe some places to make peace about that. So um, I saw something that Eli Marcus wrote on Facebook. Um, I'll leave the link to his um, Facebook page in the notes because he's always channeling amazing things. But I really felt into like this message feels connected to the eclipse. And he says, stop highlighting your parents' flaws and start highlighting their sacrifices. You didn't get it perfect because they didn't either. They made sacrifices to get you closer to the line of safety and stability. Choose to make their legacy the sacrifice, not the flaw. Either way, you'll meet yourself later by how you choose to narrate the tree from which you came. You will always be energetically poor and spiritually stank when you repeat the habit of exposing the worst and cheapening members of your tree. Because you haven't yet learned the master code to hold the frame and cover the weaknesses of members in your organization for the greater good of maintaining the house to stand for 200 plus years. Every time you throw a member of your house to the wolves, you collapse your family name back to the bottom in ways you can't even see it. You trip up and stagnate the offspring that comes from your field. They will repeat the pattern of the collapse template you foolishly chose to permanently label the legacy of your tree that you came from. Deaf, dumb, and blind. You can correct the template in-house without collapsing the house. Write and repeat the speech that preserves the legacy. Um, so I do have my own um, reflections about that concept um, in some sense where psychologically when we're doing personal development or healing, there is a phase, there is a process where if we um, can't even internally acknowledge where we feel um, 
failed by our past or family members or whatnot, because we're protecting them in our own psyche, then there's spots that we can't touch um, of grief um, or yeah, parts of our inner child and whatnot. However, within this quote, something that really touches me about it is like the the realization ultimately that knowing how to honor what the sacrifice was as opposed to picking at what went wrong um, is going to be a way to really create internal stability and harmony and a deeper sense of resonance with our past and where we come from. Um, so yeah, there. this quote hit um, I really felt it. And I feel like the the Aries Capricorn dynamic, there's something about wanting to cut oneself off or kind of do war with the past. And there's something in this quote, I really feel around reconciliation with the past. Um, I also felt this quote, you know, speaks to not cannibalizing people that we've associated with in the past, right? Where it's like, ignoring how we participated in the dynamic or what we gained from it and then just seeking to kind of like eat or cannibalize um definitely a pluto and capricorn thing um theme or shadow there right and cannibalizing them for our own gain um or whatnot in the moment you know what about honoring and celebrating where we come from where that's due and for people that have a way more difficult time identifying that because there has been such deep dysfunction or pain. I think it's important to be able to be with that grief. And there is like a soul, soul work process of identifying how as a soul I was connected to those experiences, which is an advanced spiritual thing to do. I wouldn't recommend it as a way to create further shame or blame upon yourself for like your bad karma that earned you these things. It's not about that. It's more about the deep soul level sobriety and understanding of what are these karmic lessons that I'm learning in this life and how have even my enemies been huge allies in that. Like when you really back up, there's deep levels of friendship between our, our supposed enemies in this life. So in closing, I thought that with the this eclipse that there is some energy in the field about running away from home, Aries emerging, wanting to cut ourselves off from patterns in the past or groups of people or family or something like that. And that there is like a little bit of a, um, like a ripple, like what would I call it? Like a I don't know. It's not exactly like a backlash, but there's something like uh, an opposite kind of pendulum direction that like the Libra South node is pulling us to of like, you know, slow your roll Aries. I know you want to fight. I know you want to run away. I know you want to be victorious, you know, against this deep ancient thing behind you and just claim like your new space in life, this new space in yourself. And there's an element of which I feel like life is actually celebrating that new emergent creativity. It's like, yes, like go out there, like become something new, like life loves blooms and flowers, like, right. But you're not separate from the deep history from which you come from, like those flowers and blooms have a lineage too. And so there is just some more subtle deeper kind of level of healing or harmonization or reconciliation that's happening of like, I see that you want to go do something new. Um, I see that you really want to feel alive. And is there something you can make peace with in order to do that? Um, I encountered someone recently who was very spiritual, like very spiritually open and they spoke about their past as though their past was quite like horrific 
And there was some degree to which I heard like an analysis or kind of like psychological ownership of some of those things. But then there was also an element of the spirituality that was like, all of that's in the past. And so it, it doesn't exist. And I just live in this like ascension oriented space. Um, and it saddened me a little bit. It saddened me because I think that people integrating, uh, like really integrating their psychological material and their past makes for a more comprehensive, deep spirituality, right? If we're just going to go like into Neverland or like Peter Pan space and just be like, I'm just free and all of this stuff behind me has nothing to do with me, it's a huge shadow and it does actually show up in the new form. And so when you can practice emergence and practice being in your freedom and in your autonomy, but you are still in relationship and connection and awareness to elements of the past and you know how to relate and digest and uh, interpret them as they come up, I think it makes for more integrated people, more integrated humans um, versus when there is that like severance and I'm just never going to look back. Right. And we do that for a reason. There might be times or seasons where holding the complexity of the whole is too much and we need to feel ourselves. We need to feel ourselves as separate, but run away forever and let everything grow as this like big shadow, not as good of a look, you know? So I think there's something um, happening in the field right now about, yes, you want to move forward, but how can you make peace with where you come from? At whatever scale we're talking about here, whether it's your own personal experiences from the past, whether it's your ancestry, whether it's your culture, um, whether it's your your mind's hardwiring, whatever it is, um, there's some peace and some reconciliation to be made. And I think it's happening in the light, the general light of increasing vitality um, and a sense of um courage and openness and boldness in the heart. So I'm going to leave it here. I did forget to say at the beginning to please like this video. It's super important. It's very helpful. It gives back to the channel, um, helps new people find it. Leave a comment. Let me know what resonated with you or even just say hello because comments also help. And I love to hear from you. And really like when you interact with me multiple times over time, it's like I get to know you and I like to know you. So say hi, let me know what you think and what's going on. Um, and the enrollment application for the Evolutionary Astrology and Intensive and Diviner is in the notes below. And I think that's all I have to say. So um, I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your week and do let me know how your eclipse goes.